The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell the hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. May the love of Christ shine. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offence when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone, they are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to them, explain this parable to us. Then Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? 
Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And the, his disciples came and urged him, say, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly.
Hello and welcome to the reflection on today's reading. At a time when we have guidance and law about who we can meet with, whom and where and in what number, we also have law about wearing masks and guidance and on clean, advice on cleanliness of our hands. This first part of our gospel reading may make us think about our practices today. We might have sympathy with those who have rules to follow. Prior to this reading, we hear of Jesus' miracles. He's just fed 5,000 people and many healings. Interest in Jesus and his ministry was great and increasing, but not all who followed him were welcoming his teaching. The Pharisees and scribes are following Jesus and trying to find ways of catching him and his disciples out. The Jews had followed centuries of teaching about how to clean yourself and make yourself strive to be pure because that would bring you closer to God. As a child, I remember the saying often quoted that cleanliness was next to godliness. This, it is suggested, originated in ancient Hebrew and Babylonian texts. The Jewish people were followers of the law and had laws about what they could and could what could and could not be eaten and strict rules about personal hygiene. These practices were said to be a mark of how godly someone was. When the scribes and Pharisees were gathered around Jesus, they noticed that his disciples were not following traditional practices. This would mean that they were judged to be unclean. Jesus knows their thoughts and responds to their criticism with strong words about their beliefs. He states that what goes into the mouth isn't what defiles a person. It is the words that come out of the mouth or the feelings harboured in the body that make someone unclean. This was not good news to the scribes and Pharisees who religiously followed these rules and by doing so worked out their own way to be close to God by doing the right thing. Yet here they stood close to God, made physical in a man and did not recognise him. They were seeking the one who would come and be their king, but they could not see him because he did not fit their preconceived ideas and their outward appearance might be holy, but their thoughts and actions were not. The second part of the reading is set not in Jewish territory, but in Canaanite lands where the others live those who are not Jewish and not part of their society, but also because of not following, following Jewish rituals, judged as unclean. Suddenly someone comes to Jesus calling for help. It's a woman and a Canaanite at that. She's from the region and often referred to as the Syrophoenician woman. She's doubly marginalized because she is female and a Canaanite seen as one who would not be accepted and does not belong in Jewish company. But Jesus has come into her territory and she recognises who he is. She calls him Lord and Son of David and continues to call until he responds to her. Then she falls on her knees, which is an act of worship, and pleads for the healing of her daughter, who is possessed by a demon. Jesus responds to her in a way that might, we might be shocked by as he appears to refer to her as a dog, which could be insulting. What he is saying is important for those around him to hear, for the disciples and the Jewish leaders. He is saying that he has come to the Jews as their Messiah, and this might appear to exclude the Gentiles, but she argues with him and her faith is obvious because this was a brave action, but what she gains is a desire that her daughter is healed. This, her public testimony to faith in Jesus, but also a sign that Jesus is here for everyone. Which one of us has such faith that we put ourselves at risk to gain healing for the ones closest to us? I wonder what the crowd witnessing this would have thought. If we were a Jew, would we be angry at this favour given to one who didn't deserve it? And if we were a Gentile, would this encourage us to have faith, to believe in Jesus, to recognise the Messiah, or at least to want to know more about him? As I reflected on this passage, 
I wondered where I might encounter marginalised people, willing to risk all for the sake of something good. I saw the images on the news of men, women and children crammed into boats, risking their lives in order to escape danger and looking for something better for themselves and their families. I saw the response of a nation that doesn't live in such dangerous situations, trying to stop these people gaining safety. The response from people whose hearts feared for their own comfort and safety and would seek to send these people back to the country and the dangerous situations they had just left. These migrants have put their trust and probably all they have in the hands of others who have exploited them for their own profit and then they have embarked on a dangerous journey to come to a country where they believe life will be better. Our national response is we don't have room for you. We don't have enough to share with you. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 31 says, He who oppresses the poor taunts their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honours him. God invites us to hold the needs of friends and loved ones before him. And so loving our neighbours as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our prayers on behalf of the church and the world. Faithful God, 
We pray for your blessing to be upon all those who are worshipping with us today. Our services in our churches and our online services. May your presence be seen vividly in all that we do and say each day. That your joy and your love will flow freely in and through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for all in authority, that they may never be tempted to abuse or misuse their power. Lord, remembering that yesterday, the 15th of August, marked 75 years since VJ Day, three months after VE Day fighting ceasing in the Far East, marking the end of the Second World War, we once again pledge ourselves to the cause of peace. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, friend of those in need, we pray for all those in need at this time, for those who are carrying heavy burdens, for those seeking healing, for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. As we quietly name those we know are in need at this time, we pray that all will know your peace in their lives. And healing Lord, we continue to pray for all those affected by the pandemic in any way especially remembering those ill at this time, those caring for them and those working to find a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we commend into your hands those who have recently departed this life. You gave them breath and loved them through their journey of life. Receive them now at the end of that journey into your eternal presence. And may those and those that we love and see no more rest in everlasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we go out into the world, we pray that we may reflect your love in our families, our church and our communities. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank you for your participation in this worship today. Worship is taking place in the church building each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. It's necessary to book a place at this time. Please do message if you would like to attend worship in the church building. On the final slide, you'll find ways in which you can support Christ Church financially at this time. Thank you for your support. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.